Good evening, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Been a little while since I've um, uploaded a video. I've intentionally waited until this evening to do this video. I'm going to kind of cover a few little topics here. But it is New Year's Eve here. And man, oh man, what a year 2020 was, right? <laughs> Wasn't it? Wasn't it? And incidentally, this is my uh, first video done on this new laptop that was given to me. And um, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, um, what better way to break this thing in, right? <laughs> Please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 12. Of course, you are expected to follow me along in the scriptures, okay? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 12, beginning at verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. Now you got to remember very quickly that doctrinally and dispensationally, this is under the law before the crucifixion. Okay? Doctrinally, they are still under the law in the Old Testament. We have to remember that. This is more for instruction and righteousness. Okay? And also where it says here that it says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. Remember, the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now right here, the sign of the prophet Jonas is that Jonah went into the belly of the fish, went down, okay, okay, and then was brought up again, okay. That's the sign of the prophet Jonas, okay. Let's continue. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. <clears throat> and they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not Yet do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves or the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. The doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
Now notice here for what we see so far. In verses 2 and 3, He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the sign of the times. And jumping down to verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Verse 7 says a lot. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Obviously, leaven, talking about bread, right? They see the face. As you can see the face of the the sky, you can see, oh, leaven must be talking about bread. Only saw it at face value. Okay? Verse 8. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? O ye of little faith. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, how many baskets ye took up? Okay? Now he's saying this because the miracle of the loaves, the two occurrences of the miracle of the loaves, the king was present on the earth. And the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as king, was providing miraculously for those his people. See, that's the that's the mystery of the loaves, by the way, just so you know. The king present providing for his people miraculously because he just happens to be God, the Father. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 10, neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets he took up? Verse 11, how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Only for the outside, you can see the face of the sky, just the face. But can you not discern the sign of the times? Can you not see the forest for the trees? Hmm? Now think about that. And what he said here about being, uh, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Today in this dispensation, we walk by faith not by sight, okay? Remember, the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom, okay? How many people out there are looking for signs, right? Think about all this nonsense with uh, with, uh, Trump and Biden, okay? We still don't know whether or not Trump will declare himself sovereign at the last minute and declare martial law, and then it all, then all hell breaks loose, okay? We still don't know if that's going to happen. And if that were to happen, all these false prophets here on YouTube who are big, you know, pumping up this, uh, now it's the 18th, or, oh, this is going to happen. If Trump were to, to declare himself sovereign and instill martial law, <clears throat> all these false prophets would jump on that like flies upon dung. Okay? They would. But many people can see the face of the sky. Hmm. For the sky is red and lowering. With this coronavirus nonsense. With the vaccine now in circulation, there's a new strain out there that's far more contagious and deadly than the other one. And at first I had heard that this new strain 
um, would not be the vaccine wouldn't be able to uh, protect you from it apparently but now they are saying oh oh yeah the, the vaccine will be able to protect you from the strain now <laughs> me and my wife have both heard the contradicting statements by our lovely Jesuit media and also people are unemployed businesses are being shut down and our American Jesuit government has given uh, is giving out these what they call stimulus checks for six hundred dollars. <laughs> Just to remind everybody how dependent on the government they are. Everything is starting to fall in place. And I remember uh, hearing about that. Uh, about this one Republican guy who, because, you know, the mighty Trump wanted to give out two grand, $2,000 to everybody. But there was this one Republican guy who said, no, 600 is all we can afford. And apparently this guy had said, well, what are they going to spend it on? Because everything is closed, right? Just because businesses and stuff like that are closed doesn't mean that people don't have bills to pay to get food, to provide for their family and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? <laughs> Go to Matthew chapter 24 now. Matthew chapter 24. Now, Matthew chapter 24 is specifically talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Doctrinally, this does not apply to us. Okay? He's speaking on the Jewish people about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But for our instruction and in righteousness, let's learn a little something. Okay? Let me pick your part. Matthew chapter 24, verses 4, under verse 12. We read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, Christ, anointed one, and shall be and shall deceive many. Think about that God unlimited guy and all these Catholic uh, Catholic guys out there and ladies, uh, excuse me, women cl uh, claiming to be prophets and prophetesses and stuff like that. Yeah. They have an anointed ministry. Yeah. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, today, do we not hear of uh, wars and rumors of wars? Yes, we do. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Key right there to show you unto whom this is written. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Is that not happening right now? And kingdom against kingdom. Ditto. And there shall be famines. Hello. And pestilences. <laughs> whether, whether actual or created in a lab. And earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, when it comes to verses 5 under verse 7, <clears throat> for our instruction in righteousness, I mean, we are seeing these types of things happen today. But I believe that these will reach their fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. 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 These things are happening today from verses 5 on to verse 7. Yes. But they will reach their fulfillment specifically because this is for the time of Jacob's trouble, what our Lord is talking about. During the time of Jacob's trouble, these will reach their fulfillment to the full. Okay? But are we seeing these things today? Yes, absolutely we are. Let's continue. <clears throat> 
Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And right here, the proof to who uh, who this is written for. Verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You and I today, in this dispensation the time of the Gentiles, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved for anything. Once you are saved, born again, you know, converted, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You're, you could say, your ticket is punched, you're going to heaven. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't have to endure to the end to be saved. Proving to who this is written to. The Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. But there again, for our instruction and in righteousness, when you look out there, when you look out there, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Those who preach the true Jesus Christ of the true scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, are hated. Absolutely. Absolutely they are. People want the false Jesus. You know, the son of perdition. Who is going to be a replacement of Christ. Okay? You going out there preaching that type of uh, Jesus. Well, people will flock to that. Especially when you're one of these care, uh, care Catholic people giving them lying signs and wonders. Can ye not discern the sign of the times? And of course, verse 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. They're coming out of the woodwork, ain't they? One gets put down or one goes away, another takes its place. Cut off one head, two appear in its place. And that's something. And that's something. Of course, Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three verses one under verse five. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And as far as this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, I believe we're in the last days. What about you? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of, them, of their own selves. Justifying their sins. Deflecting Turning the tables on those who will tell them of their sins through the scriptures. Throw it back at you. Covetous. Take everything away from people. What happens? That usually wants people to make or want it more, right? Makes them want it more. Right? Boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unholy, not separate. Know where it says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Unholy. Not separate than, other than. 
without natural affection. Because the love of many is wax cold. Truce breakers. False accusers. Oh, ain't that happening like crazy right now, isn't it, huh? Incontinent. Fierce. A lot of my enemies are very fierce. The enemies of our Lord are very fierce, especially when, uh, this close to the catching away. It's coming, people. Despisers of those that are good. Now, you and I are the church of the living God. You know that in you, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. If there's anything good in you, it is, it is the Lord himself. You, I, I, we are not good. But what does this say? <clears throat> Despisers of those that are good. Adhering to the scriptures. Adhering to the scriptures. Doing the works of the Lord. Not for salvation. Because it is our reasonable service. See? Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. You love your pleasures more than you love God. Examine yourself. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own selves? How do you prove yourself? By some physical thing? By a work? Of law or something like that? No. Here's how you prove yourself. Here's how you examine yourself. The scriptures. Go to Mark chapter 12 now. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, we will be reading verses 1 under verse 12. Mark chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 12. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and set an hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and led it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the handmen and beg your pardon. And at the season he sent to the hand husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones. And wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent another. And him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. All of you who are not saved, all of you who have chosen to be the Lord's enemy, or advantage, whatever it may be. The Lord has called on to you. The Lord has stretched out his hand. And you spat on it.
you're in a really bad place. You're in a really bad place. Let's continue. <clears throat> Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Hold your place here. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. You're going to notice these are a lot of familiar verses, but this is very pertinent on to what's going on right now. Isaiah chapter 14. Come on, fingers work with me. Isaiah chapter 14. Let's read that again. Verse 7 in Mark chapter 12. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Right here. I will be like thee, most high. Huh? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Back to Matthew chapter 12, verse 7. But those husbandmen said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. You get it? Verse 8. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. You shall be as gods. You will be like the Most High. You are your own judge. Not the scriptures. See, we judge ourselves. Through the scriptures. We judge ourselves through the scriptures. Not off of somebody else. See. Not off of what this guy's doing or this guy's doing. Okay? Oh, we'll read that verse in a second. Just wait for it. Go to John. Go to John. Okay? John chapter 21. Come on, fingers, work with him. John chapter 21. <clears throat> John chapter 21. <clears throat> Verses 18. On to verse 23. This is when Jesus Christ said to Shimon Peter, asked him three times, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? You know, because he denied him three times. Okay, you can read that on your own time. Check this out. Verses 18 on to verse 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, thee, he's speaking unto Shimon Peter, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, Then Peter, turning about, 
seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. Saw the other guy. Which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth, he, betrayeth thee? Well, check this out. Peter seeing him, Peter seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? What about him? Uh, look at verse 19. This spake he, signifying by what death he shall glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. And look at what Peter says in verse 21. Peter seeing him that Peter seeing seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? In verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that this disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? What does this mean? Who cares about what the other guy is doing? You examine yourself through the scripture. You examine yourself according to the scriptures. And don't compare yourselves with others, because remember what the scripture said. You're unwise. Look at verse 12 in Mark chapter 12. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. Is what you're hearing offending you? Do you feel that it is personally aimed at you? Now granted, I've done videos where I have addressed individuals personally. I don't like to name them because that's what they want. I'm not going to give them what they want. But do you ever get that feeling that what you're listening to might be directed at you personally? Why is that? For another example, when I'm addressing a certain individual, they know. They know. But when I'm not, or when others are not, when Brother Brian makes a sermon, and, it's, and it seems as though he is speaking directly to you, you know, through the scriptures. Are you offended by that? Is it Brother Brian? Or is it the scriptures? Is it me? Or is it the scriptures? Who did you Jude does not have chapters. Thank you, brother. Jude. Jude, verses 10 on to verse 16. Jude, verses 10 on to verse 16. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves, unregenerate men. 
Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. In the book of Enoch also, <clears throat> excuse me, beg your pardon, I had to do that. Beg your pardon. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I'll give you 50 guesses who the him is there and the first 49 don't count. Okay? These are murmurers complainers, walking after their own lusts, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Go to Acts now. Go to Acts. Look at that. Wait, wait, wait. Let's read verse 16 again. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Go to Acts, chapter 7. Very familiar. Very familiar unto you, okay? See, today, in this dispensation, one who prophesies is not one who foretells the future events. That is part of being a prophet. Yes, it is. And yes, in the book of Acts, we see that. Yes. Yes, we do. But to prophesy today in this dispensation Speaking the word unto you, you know, the scriptures, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit that dwells within you, speaking to you through the scriptures, through a vessel. Okay? All right? You get it? Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 56. Now, I've read this to you before, but go with me. Go with me. Stephen gives a rundown to the higher-ups, if you will. Then he gets right down to business towards the end of it. Verse 51 on to verse 56. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? 
speaking on to the Jewish people, obviously, isn't he? He's addressing Jewish people, right? Let's continue. And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Oh, stinging them. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. When they gnash upon you with their teeth. <laughs> Help. Remember who it is who has called you. Let's see. Stephen gave a rundown. And rebuked them sharply. And whereas in Acts chapter 2, when Peter was talking, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? What did these guys do? They gnashed on him with his teeth. Speaking the word unto them. And incidentally, Acts chapter 8 is when you see the first Gentile during this dispensation saved. Okay? Because Acts chapter 7 was the official <laughs> rejection of the Jewish people of the gospel. And it went to us, the Gentile, to make them jealous, to bring them back under their God. That's why Acts chapter 7 is so significant. But when the word was spoken on to them, and remember, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. The Lord was speaking through him. They gnashed on him with his teeth. And one more on this. Go to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, verses 21 on to verse 22. Paul gives a rundown in Acts chapter 22 of his conversion. Okay? He gives a rundown on it. Then he gets to this one part here, and note what happens. Okay? You can read the context of this, which is from verse 1 on to verse 20, on your own time. Paul was given the rundown of, uh, uh, on his conversion, okay? Verses 21 on to verse 22. And he said unto me, Jesus saying unto Paul, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word. And then lifted up their, their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And look at verse 23. And they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air. And they gave heed, they gave audience on to, and they gave him audience on to this word. You hear something you don't like from the scriptures that maybe cuts you? Hmm. Isn't that interesting, huh? Go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 6 now. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9, on to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9, on to verse 17. Instruction and in righteousness here. Pay attention. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9, on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, 
Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the basket. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Hold your place here. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Come on. Nah, I gotta replace this one of these days. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Boy. Oh boy. And of course, Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. You know where. Verses sixteen and seventeen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 6. Verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad. And upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The aged. With him that is full of days. Not sparing anybody. Not being a respecter of persons. And their houses shall be turned unto others. With their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. From, for from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed. Also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace. And there is no peace. It's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. We're all okay. Oh, you're living in sin? Ah, that's okay. You're okay. We're okay. God's not mad at you. God's not going to judge you. Hmm. Can ye not discern the sign of the times? Let's continue. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein 
and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. We will not hearken. And remember, verse 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, the ear, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4, on to verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4, on to uh, verse 12. Moreover thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? This is under the law, doctrinally and dispensationally, not for us. This is in our instruction in righteousness. Yeah. Can ye not discern the sign of the times? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slim back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Hey, what's more important? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, or your comfort zone, your pleasure? Which one is it? All of you. Which one is it? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hurry up and make your decision. This time is short. Not to send the sign of the times. Continue. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turneth to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. You might know it. Do you have the terror of the Lord in you? Before you say you do, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Because if you truly had the terror of the Lord, that terror of the Lord ought to be a very strong influence upon you in not touching the unclean thing. Of not putting wicked things before your eyes. Hating the work of those that turn aside. How do ye say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? 
What wisdom is in them? Therefore, will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. They comfort you in your sins. Rather than using the word, the scriptures, to rebuke you. Chasing you through the word. Hmm. You want to measure the love of a brother, of a sister? You really want to measure that? What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop. Stop. Stop right now. Get right with the Lord. Can ye not discern the sign of the times? Things are going to get dramatically worse. And I personally believe and hope. <laughs> I do hope that the catching away will happen this spring. I do hope so. I do believe it will happen in the spring, basing that off of Song of Solomon's, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. It can happen at any moment. But see, right there again, if there are those of you out there who are messing around, we could be caught up at any moment. What are you going to be found doing? What are you going to be found doing? What is the Lord going to catch you doing? You have the terror of the Lord in you. The terror of the Lord. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Don't you even give me excuses. Remember, who makes excuses? Lost people. There was a dear sister who went home uh, recently. And before the Lord took her home, this dear, dear sister didn't make excuses. I deserve this. I've done this to myself. Lord, have mercy upon me. And this sister died in peace, knowing where she was going. People who are of the Church of the Living God don't make excuses. They don't. They don't make excuses for their sins. They don't blame other people for what they themselves are doing. They don't blame their past. They don't blame their present, their circumstances now. That's what lost people do. Those who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. 
We don't do that. And if you are of the Church of the Living God and you are starting to make excuses, <laughs> you need to, um, you really need to put everything away, for, stop, get the scriptures, and have the guts. Lord, show me my sin. Rebuke me, correct me, chasten me. Do whatever you got to do, Lord. Please. See, that takes guts. You got the guts to do that, huh? Hurts. Takes a lot of guts to do that. Go now to Jeremiah chapter 7. Verses 3 on to verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 3, under verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Now, very quickly, it is important to note, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is not for us. Because, as you see, these are all works. Under the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works. It wasn't faith alone from every uh, dispensation, from Genesis on to Revelation. That's, that's heresy. That's a lie. It's not faith alone in every single dispensation. That's... Crazy. Okay? Faith and works. Faith and works. Okay? You had to do these works. It was conditional. It was conditional. What the instruction in righteousness is. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. If you're in sin messing around, how are things going for you? Is there chastening? There isn't any chastening. You, you might have some pretty big problems. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Lying words that cannot profit. You're okay. Everything's okay. We're not judging you. Just believe. Repentance is from unbelief to belief. Oh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, yeah, you can take the mark and still go to heaven. I'm struggling. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Is this house 
which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and key right there, works. This is our instruction in righteousness. And I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do this unto this, therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight. Deliver such an one on to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Now, in the Pauline epistles, we are told to pray for always, to pray for all men. But when it comes to those who have made their choice and are enemies of the Lord and have crossed that path of no return, Listen, listen. I know some of you really struggle with that. I know you do. And I know you want to give everyone a chance. You want to exhaust the hope that the devil who is attacking or whatever, if you just pray harder and harder and long and fast for them, that, okay, something will happen that they maybe get saved. Yes, you want that. You want that, yes. But there are those who have already chosen to be an enemy of the Lord and have crossed that line and will not come back. Now, the Lord can save anybody today. Absolutely in this dispensation, yes. Yes. Remember, remember that he's not pointing a gun at your head? Neither is Satan pointing a gun at your head. Remember that? Okay? Because if he were, and if he were, well then look, that there's your heretical Calvinism. No, it doesn't work like that. Again, I know a lot of you struggle with that. But there are people out there who have crossed that line. Who have heard the truth have sat in amongst those and have also heard the truth, who know the true gospel. Who know the true gospel. But remember what we read in Jude? Go back there. Remember, Jude does not have chapters. Verse 12, Jude 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, the second death, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Hmm. Amos, chapter 7. Amos. Amos, chapter 7. Verses 10 on to verse 17. 
Amos chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 17. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. And Israel shall surely be led away captive out of his, out of their own land. Speaking the truth, but they didn't want to hear it, did they? Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. Go, go tell your message unto those. We don't want to hear it. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel. Isn't that interesting? And it is the king's court. Speak unto a smooth thing, prophesy, it seems. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman. and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. He'll use the weak things to confound the mighty, remember? And take you from one thing to put you into another? Hi. Now therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. Not going to hear the word of the Lord, the scriptures. Go to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verses 43 on the verse. Oh. Oops, one second, brethren. Okay, sorry about that, brethren. I, uh, I, uh, one second, brethren. Okay, it, it, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that, brethren. Okay, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. <laughs> John chapter 8, I'm sorry. John chapter 8, verses 43 on to verse 47. Take your pardon for that. John chapter 8, verses 43 on verse 47. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. First John chapter four. Hmm. First John chapter four, verses four on to verse six. <laughs> Ye are of God, little children, 
and have, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, those of the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Hmm. Is it a is there is one of the reasons why some of you don't want to examine yourselves through the scriptures? It's because you have a sneaking suspicion of what the Lord is going to say to you through his word. Hmm? The word cuts you supposed to and our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father will guide you into all truth and our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father will send a vessel on to you you know a person spirit, soul and body to speak his words onto you The saying is, they, they will kill the messenger. But take no heed unto the message. This is, this, are you feeling like I'm talking to you personally? And I'm, I'm not talking to anyone directly. But does it feel like that I'm speaking to you personally? Are you taking this personal? Why is that? Why is that? Why is it? When the Lord gives you something to speak about, people get offended. Well, because you're lying. <laughs> huh. Are you a little guilty? Hmm? Are you guilty and you know it, huh? You can usually tell that, brethren, in people. Because they'll think everything is personally aimed at them. Everything. I've been through that before with several people. Several people. You know, the whole world revolves around you, especially when you know you're guilty. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? It's guilt. And what do you do with that guilt, by the way? What do you do with that guilt? You push it back and attack the one? Or, or do you have a, you're, you, you're sad because you got caught or something. You're more sad that you are discovered for what you have done rather than what you have done unto the Lord. And then you go and have yourself a little pity party. Do you, you get down on your knees. You get that face of yours into the ground. Weeping and crying. Lord have mercy upon me. 
for the guilt for what you have done to the Lord. Listen to me. It's not against man. It's against the Lord. That you're, you're in trouble with the Lord. You're living in sin. Justifying it. Can you not discern the sign of the times? Things are getting worse and worse and worse. 2021. Whoa. Is this the time that you want to love your pleasures more than you want to love God? Is this the time to justify your sin? Is this the time for you to be as the world? Is this the time for you to be religious rather than converted? See, and that's what it is. People get offended when you quote them scripture. You read to them the scriptures. Because remember what we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12? Hmm? Remember that? Remember that? Come on. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Joints and marrow. Your body. Get it? Soul, spirit, joints and marrow. Your body. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Guess what, dear friend? The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, has your number. There are those of uh, uh, you out there who know that. So you don't read it. And if you do read it, you try to twist it and pervert it. Teaching doctrines of men. Being seduced by devils. Deceiving and being deceived. This is not the time. <laughs> it's never the time, but this close... What if, what if the catching away happens tomorrow? What if it happens before this video is over and done with? Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 12, on to verse 24. Romans chapter 2, verses 12, on to verse 24. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. The law is written in their hearts, whether they like to accept it or not. Their conscience also bearing witness. 
and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Oh boy. Read the scriptures. Hmm. Do they accuse you? Or do you search the scriptures to excuse yourself? In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Um. think you might have secrets now, right? Guess what? At the judgment seat of Christ, Church of the Living God, there ain't going to be no secrets. And those of you who are lost at the great white throne, there ain't going to be no secrets. You think you might be getting away with something now, boy. Hmm. Can ye not discern the sign of the times? Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resteth and restest and restest, excuse me, in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will. And approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge, which has the form of knowledge of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege, bowing down to your own idol? Yourself. Lovers of them of their own selves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. You know, people, you can't play your games forever. You can't. When are you going to wake up? When is it going to be enough for you? And I'm not talking about those who have made their choice and will do anything to destroy anybody and to hate our Lord. I'm not talking about those people. When is it enough? How, how, how tightly are you going to grab onto that one thing that you excuse? 
not let go. Is it going to take you getting killed? <laughs> Look what's coming, brethren. Does this offend you? Huh? Taking it a little personal? Hmm? Go to First uh, Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. We will be reading verses 10 on to verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, capital S. For the Spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 12 right here, hold your place. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse, come on, 7. Okay? Look at verse 12 here. Now we have not received, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Verse 7 in 2 Timothy chapter 1. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Okay, go back now to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost Teach it. And the Lord is that spirit. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You have God the Father living within you. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, unregenerate man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Do you judge yourself according to the scriptures? For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Hmm. There are those out there who say, claim they are of the church of the living God. They call themselves Christians. Yet they're lost like a blind man running a race. But yet they say they're Christians. And if God the Father were truly in some of these people who call themselves Christians, they've either, either seared their conscience with a hot iron, maybe getting chastened on to death that we don't know about, or they have not. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that spirit dwelling within them. Now. 
There are people out there, brethren, who can know so much that they lack when it comes to the things of the Spirit. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ. Now, let's look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 while we are at it. Let's look backwards a little bit at verses 1 on to verse 5 now. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. See, someone who has it just up here can uh, train themselves with excellency of speech or wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Denying the power thereof, you know? Those who say that they are of us and not of us. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The power of God, not in the wisdom of men. Look at verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, comma, save Jesus Christ, comma, and him crucified. Look at your place here. Go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. One verse. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, Jesus Christ. Do you get it? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are you dead unto sin? Hmm? Does sin appeal to you still? Now, hey, I'm not saying anything about being sinlessly perfect, okay? I've spoken against that. We are going to sin. But see, there's a problem when you are living in it, excusing it, quite frankly, indulging into it. And you have a glib sorrow, but not one that reaches onto the heart. See, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, who saved. The very least, who is saved? 
verse 20 in Galatians chapter 2, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, there are so many out there who say that they are Christians, but yet by their fruits we shall know them. No chastening, no repentance, but just keep going on, going on. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verses 1 and verse 13. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Living in it. Reveling in it, excusing it, justifying it. Oh, woe is me, yeah? Yeah, woe is you. What are you doing about it? Are you crying out to the Lord? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ ra being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For, if, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth on to God. Likewise. Likewise. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you looking at verse 12? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Again, we are going to sin. Yes. Sinless perfection in this life, 
not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. But there is one, there is a big difference for one who chooses to sin, repents of it, okay, and keeps on going. There is then one that chooses to live in that sin. And justifying it and repenting of it until the next time to do the circle over and over and over and over again. There's a big difference between those two. Hmm. If your circle of sin hasn't been broken yet, you might have to make some really hard and deep consideration of your ways. And you might have to even see if you're even saved or not. Go to Romans 8 verses 5 on to verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verses 5, unto verse 11. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded, carnally minded, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Ah, that's the conditional clause right there, boy. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, ah, note the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Note that, yeah, one and the same. One God, Spirit, soul, and body, yeah. Okay, let's continue. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Whoop. Yeah, we know. And if Christ be in you, read this with me. Okay, come on. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And look over here in verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 10 again. And if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the de dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. What's the opposite of that? What's the opposite? Moot, hello. See, 
it, and here's the thing, brethren. We're, we're going to sin. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Sinless perfection. Sinless perfection. Never sinning. After you get saved, never sinning. What a, no. Not going to happen. But see, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things in the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. If you're letting this rule your life, you're in the flesh. If this dictates to you You're nothing but an animal. Beast. Sensual. Devilish. We are to mortify our flesh, remember? Are you dead unto sin? Again, not saying that you will not sin. I'm not saying that, okay? Not at all. But um, are you living in the flesh, allowing the appeal of flesh, the carnal mind to dictate your life? Hmm? You're in a lot of trouble. Again, can you not discern the sign of the times? Look what's coming, brethren. Look what's coming. And you want to be carnally minded? You're going to cling to excuses? Yeah, you're weak. You can't fix it yourself. The Lord can. Here's the deep thing that you need to think about. Do you want him to get rid of that? Hmm? Or do you just try to get away with as much devilment as you can and yet still be of the church of the living God? Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, if you're saved, born again, the body is dead because of sin. Okay? What is the opposite of this? Someone who is dead in their trespasses and sins. Otherwise, living in their flesh. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, which those who live by the flesh do, according to the prince of the power of the air, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Those who reject the truth, who gnash on you with their teeth, who get so offended by the scriptures, don't want to hear it. They actually run away from you when you pull out your little pocket sword and show that this is my standard. They're like, oh, 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 I got to get away. Yeah, yeah. 
those who hear the true gospel and reject it, and mock it, and laugh at it. Yeah. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust, lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Look at this verse. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. Past tense. In the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. If you are fulfilling the lusts of your flesh and the desires of your mind that are contrary to the scriptures, with what is coming rapidly, you need to repent. You need to get serious and start truly fearing the Lord. Because, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, of the church of the living God, but yet living as children of wrath, that there's a problem there. There's a big problem there. There's a big problem there. Go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, on to verse 15. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus the Lord, so Walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body, bodily, spirit, soul, and body. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. See, under the law, in the Old Testament, that circumcision made without hands wasn't there. So whatever you did in your flesh directly affected your soul. This dispensation, time of the Gentiles, there is that circumcision made without hands, which is Christ. Because remember, the body is dead because of sin. And some of you are reveling in it. Making the grace of our, goal, of our God a mockery. Buried with him in baptism. Oh, buried with him in baptism, where also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. 
and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Galatians again, chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Second Corinthians now. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses seventeen, on to verse twenty-one. Therefore, if therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, and you are going to live in sin, and you are going to live in sin as the church of the living God. <laughs> the natural man receiveth not, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. I'm sure those of you who are lost, verse 21 just wreaks havoc on you, doesn't it? Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. Remember, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Here's a very stern warning. Galatians chapter 2, one verse, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed... I make myself a transgressor. When you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, changes are going to happen. Things going to happen. It's inevitable. It just happens. The Lord will change your life. He does not hold you at gunpoint, leading you along, because remember, you are servants, not slaves. You are servants, not slaves. God does not want slaves, because slaves have no will, do they? No, servants do. Calvinism, okay? Basically taught slavery. You have no choice of your you had no choice in it. You're going to heaven, you're going to hell, there ain't nothing you can do, it's already predetermined. No. No. We are servants, not slaves. Again, God's not leading you around making you to do this stuff. He wants you to choose him in all things. When you don't, you tell me what happens, huh? Hence, if you try to rebuild something 
that was destroyed from your past, going back to it as a saved man or woman. I make myself a transgressor. But there again, the unfortunate question to ask is, did you ever leave it? Brethren, this corona thing ain't going away. The Church of the Living God is going to be facing severe persecution. They want us to be silenced from censorship and whatever. They're out there tracting and witnessing, it's getting rougher. I'm very very rough, actually. Um, it's it's becoming far more difficult, far more difficult. And me and my wife, we we are prolific tractors. <laughs> okay, trackers is with tractors. You know, we tracked all the time. It's getting rough out there. People's hearts are getting hardened. The love of many is waxing cold. And you as the church of the living God, we need to be weak so that the Lord may be strong in us. For my grace is sufficient for thee. For my power is made perfect in weakness. We really need, as the church of the living God, to sanctify our lives, to take diligent heed to what we are doing, and making no excuses. What kind of testimony are you going to leave behind? One that they will remember? Or one that they will remember? You feel me? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1. 1 of verse 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Are you dead to this world? If you're indulging your flesh, if you are living in sin, I don't think so. The world is probably very much alive unto you. Or I should say, you are alive unto the world. Look at that out there. Is that what you want? Remember, we live by faith, not by sight. Is that this what you want? Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two, verses eleven. On to verse 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself.
2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. In Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, on to verse 20. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. Remember, we are called onto good works after our salvation, not to save ourselves or to be saved, because we are called into the ministry of reconciliation. It does not matter who you are in whatever capacity he has put you in. We are ministers of reconciliation. Okay? And it is good to be zealously affected in that. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. In other words, not only when I can see you, not give an eye candy. Hmm. What, what are you like, by the way, when it's just you and the Lord? Hmm? What are you like? Only well, you and the Lord. Man. Satan knows that. Hey, those of you out there who have talked to me personally, through Skype, email, phone, text, you know the person you're talking to is the one you're going to get when you contact me personally. You know that. What do you like when you're alone, just you and the Lord? My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Look at that. Until Christ be formed in you. Formed in you. It doesn't say until Christ be in you. Until Christ be formed in you. Him guiding your life. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. Don't look at that. Run away from that. What are you doing? Quit that. Get over here. Go. Being guided by the Lord. And through that forming. Himself. In you. So that you may be separate than, other than. Brethren, we really need to individually Scrutinize our lives through the scriptures and be obedient onto the scriptures. You know, many say, well, I live this by faith and practice. Really? Really? What about when it comes to something that really gets in the way of your personal tastes? And that little pet sin that you love so much. Don't 
Don't you think it's time to give it up? Where is your faith? Is it on the Lord for what he has done and that he will guide you? Or is it your faith is in your faith that you know something? Which one is it? Twenty twenty one, according to my time, will be here in about two and a half hours. Please consider these things, brethren, sisters, and examine yourselves. And I challenge every single one of you of the Church of the Living God. Have the guts to ask the Lord the hard question. Lord, Show me my sin. Rebuke me, correct me, chasten me. Or are you one of those who knows what your sin is and you don't want the Lord to correct you, chasten you, or rebuke you over that? I do love you, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Our time is so short. And we all need to examine our ways and examine ourselves in the light of Scripture. And um, if you have sin in your life, What are you waiting for? Is there something wrong with you? Do you love the Lord? Or do you love your pleasure more? You say you love the Lord, but yet still giving in to your pleasure. I call you a liar. I call you a liar. But we do have the blessed hope. That's the way. I do hope and pray it be this spring. Chronological spring of, of the uh, Jewish calendar, not the Gregorian calendar, which we are on, which differs. That's going to be it for this video. This has offended you, and you want to attack me? Go ahead. Not going to bother me. But maybe, maybe you should examine yourself in the scriptures. Okay. Got other videos coming, not tonight, but uh, got other videos coming. Um, I'm still working, um, or excuse me, still looking into this pragmatism thing. Very interesting. Um, but uh, there will be, there are more videos on the way. And th thank you to all of you, every single one of you has helped us, prayed for us, and been there for us. Praise the Lord for you. Church of the living God. Thank you. I love you. See you next year. Bye-bye.